The A8 is going to test you on engine performance. There's a similar test called the L1, which is on advanced engine performance. The L1 is a much, much harder test. Does this mean that the AA is super easy? Not exactly. You still got to know all the engine related systems and diagnostics. While training for the A8, I ran into three topics that seemed difficult at first. Number one is diagnosing a no-start condition. We've all been there. We've all had a no-start experience. You're trying to start the vehicle and all you hear is Most of the time, the cause is a low battery. But when it's not, it's when the fun begins, right? The cause of a no-start could be due to a fault in the ignition system, fuel system, starting system. You could have a bad sensor, a restriction, emission components, incorrect timing, and even the charging system, if it's underperforming, will give you a no-start the next time around. Oof. Where do you even begin? To an amateur, finding the cause of a no-start could be like finding a needle in a haystack. There's too much information to know. So if someone's not trained to diagnose a no-start, what are they going to do? Most of the time, they end up loading the parts cannon. This is when they replace parts, hoping that this will fix the issue. No testing is done. They resort to guess diagnostics. They could be out hundreds of dollars on a new secondary ignition system when the problem could have been an open crankshaft position sensor. Now that's wild. So at first, diagnosing a no start could seem like the hardest thing in the world. But after you learn the proper steps to take, it's not. It's pretty simple. So, can a missing gas cap cause a no start? Can a stuck open EGR valve cause a no start? Speaking of EGR, number two is testing the EGR system. This is one of those systems people don't know is there, what it looks like, or what it does. Before trading, I knew how the EGR operated but I didn't know how to test it. EGR stands for exhaust gas recirculation. Basically, it is a valve that is connected between the exhaust manifold and the intake manifold. It allows some exhaust to re-enter the engine for temperature control. Things seem complicated when all the different types of EGR systems are introduced. You can have vacuum controlled EGR, electronic EGR, some EGR systems have a delta pressure feedback system. Some can even have a pressure transducer. How am I going to test all these systems? You'll find out that it's easy. Most of the time you'll use a vacuum pump or a scan tool. And some newer vehicles don't even have an EGR. And if they do, the monitors will take care of diagnosis for you. Easy. So, out of these five exhaust gases, which one is the EGR designed to reduce? What are the symptoms of a stuck open EGR valve? And what are the symptoms of a stuck closed EGR valve? Number three is analyzing fuel trims. This can be a positive percentage, a negative percentage. There's short-term fuel trims, long-term fuel trims, if you have a V-type engine, there's bank one fuel trims and bank two fuel trims. If you don't know how to interpret those numbers, you could easily misdiagnose something. Plus, if you're going to be reading fuel trims, then you'll have to know how to read oxygen sensor waveforms. These waveforms switch up and down at a low voltage. But guess what? There's another type of oxygen sensor called an air fuel ratio sensor. The waveform for this one is more of a linear looking waveform at idle. So it all seems complicated at first, but it's not. You'll use fuel trims as a guide. Their output will determine which diagnostic tests you're going to perform. 
So, how do you test a air fuel ratio sensor? Can you test it with the digital multimeter? And can a weak fuel pump set a lean code? And that's it. Training for the 8A is a very enjoyable experience. There's something about being given a sluggish engine and restoring it back to its normal capacity. Plus, the money's really good. Take spark plugs, for example. Changing spark plugs on an S550 Mustang starts at about 350. And changing spark plugs on a newer Porsche 981 starts at about 1500. Yeah. So invest in yourself by properly learning engine performance and by passing the 8-8 test. It'll be worth it. Have a good day, you guys.